of a show tonight, a show that you would have seen if you were alive about 90 years ago when Harry Houdini performed. I'll do a few magic tricks he did and also a few escapes he did. There's just a few things I want to say before I start. One, you in the front, don't move forward. Back up. Don't touch the stage. Please. If you guys come forward, I'll have to send you to the back, too, because that's for safety reasons. And, stuff. and the other thing is, the only thing, if you guys want to, you've been doing a lot of yelling and screaming tonight, that's fine even during my show. But when I raise my hands, that means be quiet now. Because if, if you don't be quiet when I raise my hands, I'm going to only be able to do fewer tricks, and the show will be shorter. Does everyone understand that? Okay, next of all, quiet. Another reason to be quiet is so that people in the back can hear. Can you hear me in the back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go without a microphone if I can. I have a little more freedom to move around. I'd like to start off with an illusion. Something made famous by Harry Houdini. And I'm also going to perform something that's not an illusion. That's escape related with some silks. I'll banish a few silks. That's an illusion. I'll tie some silks together and untie them, that's not an illusion, that's a skill. If Houdini was tied up with one or two hundred feet of rope, he could get out, he could escape. He did this by using a skill, a knowledge of not. I'll demonstrate both to give you an example of the difference between magic and escape. Are you ready? Yeah! I went over you. <laughs> Notice I roll my sleeves up. A lot of people accuse me of cheating and using my sleeve. I will not. Can you see the scarf? Can you see it down there? I'll do it again. Can you see it in there? Didn't bog it down far enough. How about now? That's an illusion. Something you think you Any kind of 
kind of knot you want. Make them tight, make them strong. I tell him to tie two and he ties three. First he can't tie any, then he ties three. Did you pull him tight? He's got three knots. Houdini was an expert at undoing knots. You've tied two very good knots here. Take your fingers and just see if you can like undo it. Stand right over here. Hold it with your fingers there. Don't start yet. Stand right over here, Nate. I'm gonna untie my two. You're gonna untie your two. You get ready now. Are you ready? Go. The race. You're not done yet. Tell you what I want you to do. Nate, you check his knot out. You check this one out. <laughs> Quiet. That's just an example of how Houdini could untie any type of knot. Those were legitimate knots. They tied them. I'd like to move right into another rope effect. Since I'm not doing the rope tie, I did demonstrate how he undid knots. I'd like to now demonstrate an effect performed only by Houdini. This is an unpublished manuscript for my collection. I'm gonna try it tonight. I don't know if it'll work though. The manuscript itself is very faded. I own a very large Houdini collection of original items. 500 books, many of his handcuffs, lockpicks, straight jackets. And this is an unpublished manuscript of a rope trick Houdini performed. I'll do the best I can. If I, if I goof up, bear with me. What he starts with is one solid length of rope. Just hold the end of that rope, pull on it, make sure it's solid. He'll do it. Solid piece of rope? Good, you can let go. <laughs> Houdini said to take the rope just like this. Take a pair of scissors. Find the center of the rope right here. Bring the center up between the two ends and cut it, leaving us with how many pieces of rope? Exactly the same length. It's your fault. Okay, wait, I can fix this. They're not the same length, so I'll bring this, this rope up. Oh yeah, one rope, two ropes, three ends, four ends. I bring this, no. I don't know what to do since the ropes weren't the same length. I'm going to start over. <laughs> Exactly the 
same length. What do we need to do? Being a master showman he was, was take one, two of these ropes, the same length, simply pull like this, and then they became one little tiny short piece of rope, one medium length piece, and one very long piece of rope.
reason they call this an illusion is because it is just that. Solid steel rings apparently melt together. This ring linked inside that ring. Apart. You can actually hear them wake. And yes, I heard the comment, there is a hole. He is so right. Hi. <laughs> I reach in a hole like this in my pole, and that's how you get him apart. Are you ready to help Paul? Yeah, now you can pull your sleeves off. Paul will now take this ring, examine it, look at it very closely, and make sure it is one solid steel ring. Don't touch it. <laughs> Paul will now take these two rings, look at them, examine them, make sure that don't touch them. Just look. Are they solid? Yes, he says they're solid. Take these three rings, look at them, examine them. Are they solid? They'll prove they are solid. <laughs> I like them. Thank you. Paul, we'll now unlink them.
would like to disappear, some of you, yes. <laughs> but we will not do that tonight. We will not do that tonight. Okay, everyone quiet now. We're going to perform an effect that was actually performed by Harry Houdini. This piece belonged to and was used by Houdini. It's a very rare piece for my collection. It will not fool you. It will look like a stupid trick because it is. But this was performed a little over 90 years ago. And I'd like to give you a taste of what that was like to see a trick back then. You start with a hat, an empty hat. No elephants, there's a sticker. No elephants, no birds, nothing else. It's an empty hat. You also start, there's air in there too, so it's not empty. You also start with an empty box. Okay, it's not empty. Are you happy? One die, one half of a pair of dice. What Houdini did was he made the die go from this box and fly into that hat. He did this one of two ways, depending on the mood that he was in that particular night. He did it visibly where you could see it go, or he did it invisibly where you could not see it go. How do you want to see it done? Okay. I heard both. And you're being a pretty good crowd tonight, so I'll do it both ways for you. All right. First of all, we'll do the trick invisibly. Watch the die fly invisibly into the hat. The die is right here. You can't call it dice because that implies plural. <laughs> the die is in the hat. The box is empty. It's empty. Before I complete this and show you the die, oh, the hardest part of this effect, I forgot to show you this part, the hardest part of this effect when Houdini performed it was making the die come back. <laughs> <laughs> the die is back in the box.
there really is not gone. It kind of flies back and forth. But what we will do is make the dive really fly into the hat on the count of three. The one, one, two, three, four, three. After the count of three, everybody yells the magic word, hockey. Different locks. 
First, I give John one lock and one key. Actually, two keys. Check the lock out, make sure it locks, make sure it's real. Willie, check out the other one. Here's the keys. Pull on those two chains, John, make sure they're solid steel. Are they solid? No. Pull on the other two chains, Willie, are they solid? Check the middle bar out, is it solid? No, I'm just, just kidding. No. No. Check the middle bar out, is it a solid piece of steel? Are the locks real? No. Don't let me touch the keys until the end of the trick. John, I want you to lock that on. Lock it on as tight as you can, spare no mercy. <laughs> John has done this before, I can tell. We gotta lock both chains together. I will attempt to escape in less time than it takes John to put me in. <laughs> Shouldn't be hard. John, these were Harry Houdini's lockpicks. They're worth about a thousand dollars. If they had broken, you would have to pay me. <laughs> so you be very careful if you ever touch these again. And how did you find them? You're not supposed to be able to get into that compartment. John is laughing, and this John is saying, "I now have no way out." <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have called on him. John, hold the bag with your left hand. Aim your right hand at that wall. Willie, hold the bag with your right hand. You have to move. Your arm's not that long. Aim your left hand at this wall. Makes the show look bigger. Spread apart a little bit more. Move forward a little bit more. Don't hit the mic. Does anyone have a second hand on their watch? You don't even have a watch on. <laughs> you, do you have a second hand? I do. You count the seconds for it? I have two hands. Stand up. Just stand up. You guys here, back up a little bit. Don't just back up. Count out loud for us, real loud. Not all of you, just him. Just him. Just count out loud. I want to make sure your voice is loud enough. Two, three, four. Just let him count. Sir. John, one. Okay, very good. Very good. Just want to check it out. Wait, one more time. Check the bag out. Make sure it's empty. Houdini's record for this escape was 15 seconds. I will attempt to beat that. I place my hands in the bag. Spread your arms out. What's your name with the watch? When Kyle says go, I will begin the run. <laughs> <laughs> John, check it on me! Stay on the Anyway, when Kyle spread out, Abraham is the wall over there. Peter! Peter! Peter!
And you will count out loud, Kyle. He's doing it. He's already done. Oh. Shut the hole. Put your foot up there. You can deliver it. 